Here's an analogy that I have been using today to describe this. Trump's followers, who are theoretically going to buy up the stock, hold it up for their trusted leader because they love this guy, is akin to his most devoted supporters storming the Capitol, going to jail, while Trump watched, didn't pardon any of them, didn't cover their legal bills. And what did he do? He goes on throwing parties at Mar-a-Lago, running for president, and living his life. So now here we are. They're going to buy up his shares, prop it up, and potentially he will then dump his shares into their laps and he'll keep on trucking with the dough. Yeah, I saw you tweet about that uh, earlier tonight, Stephanie. And, uh, you know, so you're, basically what you're saying is it's Donald Trump business as usual. Uh, he's one <laughs> Is that lucky how you see guy. this? He's one lucky guy, because if this had not happened today, he'd be really in trouble come Monday. Now he can make a colorable argument, not a great one, but he can make a colorable argument that now he's got something worth $3 billion, maybe, that perhaps somebody will lend him something against, you know, maybe one of his very wealthy friends, of which there are, you know, a big handful who might be willing to do this for him. But, but as you said, Stephanie, this company has z basically zero revenue, making tens of millions of dollars of losses. It's going to be a meme stock. If he goes to sell his stock, it's going to trade down dramatically, like most SPAC stock spots do. Spot, SPAC stocks do anyway. So I don't know anybody who's going to take this risk unless they just want to be in tight with Donald Trump. Okay, but that's the thing, Ron. Yes, he does yeah. know some really wealthy friends, but this company, all it is, is Donald Trump's post. Without them, there's nothing there. Like, is anyone paying attention to history repeating itself? The last time Trump had a publicly traded company, it failed spectacularly. It was a casino company, of course. And it even traded under the symbol DJT, which this will. Like, is anyone paying attention to this? Oh, I, I know the story quite well, Stephanie. I covered it back uh, when, and there was, in fact, there was a now late analyst on Wall Street, Marvin Rothman, who had very negative things to say about the prospects for DJT. Donald Trump sued him. Marvin won the lawsuit and actually won enough money to go out and start his own business uh, because he was right about what happened to DJT Enterprises, which were a series of casinos in, in Atlantic City. Very hard to lose money in that business. Donald Trump found a way to do it. Um, in this case, as you say, I mean, is somebody willing to put up $500 million and take the risk that that's going to depreciate almost immediately once DJT goes public, particularly if they know at some juncture he's going to be selling shares? That's a tough call. Even billionaires don't like to lose $100 million or $200 million or, or $300 million. So they're going to have to really be comfortable taking that kind of risk. Okay, but that's exactly the point. Even billionaires, they became billionaires because they're <laughs> smart, shrewd investors, yeah. <laughs> Bill. So, so if one were to do this, it would be public that they bought up these shares that they then toppled in their face, or if they decided they were going to be the person that was going to put up the bond for Donald Trump, wouldn't that cause so much scrutiny for this person? Wouldn't that have people wondering, what on earth do you need a potential next president to fix for you that you would do something like this? Well, of course, Stephanie, it would raise those kinds of questions. <laughs> that's, that's why, you know, this is a very, very sketchy situation. But, but again, I get back to the fact that, you know, until today, like yesterday, he couldn't have offered this as a potential uh, asset for somebody to lend against. Now, by some miracle of this shareholder vote today and potential waiver of the board letting him sell earlier than six months, he might actually be able to pull this off. He might be able to find somebody, uh, you know, this, the, you know, this, this, tick, this guy who owns 15 percent of TikTok, who's a big uh, Donald Trump fan, might lend him uh, $500 million against that uh, DWAC SPAC stock. I wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it. Uh, and it'll certainly trade down. And it may not be a good investment. But, you know, who ca that guy may not care. And, and there yes, are other ways to do about it. The co you're talking about the co-founder of Susquehanna, who is a huge investor in yes. TikTok. Of course, Donald Trump said, I don't want to see TikTok getting banned. It all stinks to the high heavens. Do you think, Ron... This is the reason Donald Trump really hasn't returned to Twitter, because his posts are the only thing keeping Truth Social afloat. And Truth Social is Trump's money ticket to, to get out of jail, theoretically, well, not, was, not literally, because yeah, we know jail can be pending. Fact, it, it didn't really become actual money 
until the SPAC deal was closed, until the Acquisition Corporation and Donald Trump's Truth, Truth Social, the shareholders agreed to engage in the merger and go public. Had that not happened, had it been voted down, his shares would have been worthless. You know, there is one other way he can get money from this, which is an off-market transaction. If he were to find a willing buyer for one-sixth of his stake, $500 million versus the presumed $3 billion it's worth, you can do an off-market transaction and just sell it to in a single block to someone else. Highly unlikely. There are ways for him to monetize this. But, yeah, he's he is the only asset that Truth Social has. And... Uh, it, it, from a business perspective, you know, I agree with Bill entirely. It's, it's, it's not a great proposition. Stock will probably trade down, but he might have just enough in the way of, uh, of a stake in this company to, to get out of Dodge and, and pay that money that he needs to pay to the courts in the next several days. It's a bad business move, so you'll have to wonder why would someone do it. I'm out of time, but quickly, Bill, any shot Trump files for bankruptcy? He knows how to do that very well. Well, he does. He's never filed for personal bankruptcy, as you know, Stephanie, as he's the first to point out. But until this uh, merger was agreed to today, I would have bet he would be filing personal bankruptcy on Sunday night. Now I think he's going to announce some sort of deal on Sunday night. You know, he's Mr. Drama. He's going to do it on Sunday night just before everybody thinks he's going to not be able to pull this off.